Good morning. It is cold and I've woken up to the sound of rain on the canvas and the sound of wind roaring full-throatedly beyond the trees under which I camped. So, I don't know how much I'm looking forward to today really. I've got some coffee brewing, then I'm going to have to go through the unpleasant ritual of putting back on my damp jacket and my wet, cold shoes. Oh well, it's got to be done. I've got a chunk of miles to do today. Um, and if it's not too horribly raining, I shall film some of it and show you my suffering. Breakfast first, then back on the bike. There are probably not many things in my life more unpleasant than waking up cold in the morning, putting on yesterday's damp socks, damp cycling gear. But that's what I've done. And I guess I should probably take it as a good thing that that's one of the most unpleasant things in my life because it means <coughs> My bar for suffering is not particularly high and generally I'm quite a privileged person. I might not feel like it right now, my fingers are numb, my feet are wet. I'm going to cycle to Swansea. Come on. I'm sorry if the audio for this stuff is a bit bad and the wind's a bit loud. I've had a minor catastrophe. I've lost a bag. One of my rear panniers has come off and it's got my microphone in it, which is why this is a bit windy and hissy. I've been backtracking now for about 20 minutes with no sign of it. Uh, I don't know what's happened here. I'm pretty sure I can't have missed it. It's only a thin track back up, but oh, it's depressing having to retrace your steps. And I don't know how far back to go before I just write it off. I mean, it's got my lunch in it. That's not good. It just means whatever happens, I'm well, well behind schedule again. God damn it. Oh, I was on the verge of giving up then as well. Come on, you bugger! Ah, ah. Right, although I found the bag with a microphone in it, I can't be bothered to go through and get it out. My fingers are absolutely numb. I've just come down off the hills and I'm just <coughs> sheltering underneath the little railway that runs up the side of Taliban Reservoir. And, I mean, the path I've just come down is basically a river. Conditions up on the hills are really, really bad. It's just absolutely waterlogged. Everywhere is wet and muddy. And much as I'm loving the new bike, my choice of tires may not have been good. These Max's Chronicles just spin in the mud. They're, they're useless as soon as you hit anything slick. So, I'm out of the rain for a second in this tunnel. I'm going to eat a banana and I might do some root jiggery pokery and see if I can keep myself on gravel and tarmac for the rest of this because I'm well behind schedule after going back to fetch my bag and a slow descent down over the hill. So I'm going to look at some maps, eat some snacks, see what we can do next. This is what I'm faced with on the road. This looks like <clears throat> there's been a landslip up ahead because of the rain, I guess. This road is closed. So, yeah, I'm really am gonna have to do some route planning. I mean, I've had a look at maps and there isn't much I can do to keep off 
my route except back down to the coast. This is all going a bit wrong to be honest. Ah, damn it. Well, good evening. I'm narrating the end of this one from the warmth and comfort of my own home. I'm doing that because the ride you've just been watching got pretty unpleasant pretty soon after that last shot was filmed. Very wet, very windy, just not very nice at all really. By the time I got down to Swansea I'd pretty much lost the light, I pretty much lost the will to pedal anymore. And so I did what any good general would do when the men have fought to exhaustion, the rations are expended, and the enemy amassing for a final attack. I called in the big guns, which in this situation meant phoning my brother and asking him to pick me up from Tesco's, which he very kindly did. And some people might think that's quite an unsatisfactory end to a ride, but I'm going to argue that it's not. I'm not a competitive person. I'm not out to beat anyone or anything, least of all myself. I ride my bike to take in the view, smell the flowers, get out in the world, to finish the day feeling like I've sucked the marrow out of every minute it presented me with. And I don't get any satisfaction from riding cold, wet and hungry into a headwind in the dark. I also think it's quite important to remember that if you don't like the way a ride has ended, just don't call it the end. It rarely is. It's just a break in the great ride of life. There's always another day, there's always another ride, until there isn't, and then it doesn't matter anymore. So do what you have to, to enjoy it as much as you can while you're there, I say. And if some parts of it are not as satisfying as others, then just keep your eyes forward, looking at the next one. You know, for me, this time, I had a couple of days in the holiday house, and then I had to cycle back into Swansea to get my train home. And I set off from the house, climbed up onto the hills. I had the sun on my face, I had the wind on my back, and it was a truly glorious ride back into town. So if a satisfactory ending is important to you, if you really care whether Vincent Vega was alive or dead in that final scene, then let's pretend that this ride ended here, in this little river valley, down amongst the moss and the ferns in the sunshine. That's your satisfactory ending, if you need it. But we all know it's not really the end. It's just a break. And I will see you all for the next leg of the ride.